Hi, Susan Leahy here from RobertsRulesMadeSimple.com, coming to you with another episode of Robert's Rules Revealed. Today, we're going to be talking to consultant Terry Clark from RealBoardSolutions.com. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode. All right, so we're so excited to have you here today, Terry. How are you? I'm great, thanks, Susan. Well, and I tell you, this is, this is an issue that so many of my customers, my clients come to me with, is questions about conflict of interest. And so I wanted to bring you on Robert's Rules Revealed today to kind of talk to us a little bit about, well, conflict of interest, what is it, and how do boards deal with it? So let's just jump right in. What, uh, what advice or tips could you give us right off the bat about, well, what is conflict of interest? Question I get just about every, way, every day. But it's something that uh, will, could disrupt the board, uh, causes um, uh, potential issues, mm -hmm. and certainly you have to um, deal with it and deal with it quickly. Right. Well, and, and, and I think that this is a big thing is it certainly creates disruption and a lot of people don't really know how to handle it. You know? And so uh, what, what else could you tell us about conflict of interest? What should, be people th what, what should people be thinking about when they, when they think a uh, conflict of interest is happening? Well, I think at the beginning they need to think, now, is this a true conflict of interest or hmm. is this a perceived conflict? Because actually a perceived conflict can even cause greater problems at the board level. Interesting. Talk to me about the difference. What's the difference between conflict of interest and perceived? Well, oftentimes uh, perceived is exactly that. They perceive that there is a conflict of interest. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but they think that there is. Right, right. Now, so what it's, it's often good to actually find out, is there one or is there not one? Right, and I mean, maybe, maybe it's that sense of staying open to the question, is it actually, instead of thinking right off the bat that this is a conflict of interest, it's maybe asking the question, is this or is it a perceived conflict of interest? Yeah, number one question. Hmm. Number That's one great. question. That's and certainly great. once uh, you know, it's determined that there is or is not a conflict of interest, uh, the individual that's perceiving it can relax and, right. you know, so they can say, hey, I understand. Right, right, absolutely. So, this, you know, one of the questions that I get, Terry, is, uh, and this has happened more than once, is a husband and wife serve on the same board. Is that a conflict of interest? What would you say about that question? Can I give you an example quickly? Absolutely, please do. So, one board, they have a committee, they end up with three family members on the committee. Um, certainly, that's an absolute conflict of interest. Right. But what about if it's a family foundation mm -hmm. and they're all members of the family? Absolutely not a conflict of interest. Right. I mean, I would say there would be no committee if it was a family-run organization, right? Oh, no, that's, that's true, yeah. Right. So, so many I guess... times the answer is it depends. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's a big, that's, I think that's a big piece too, is like, you know, you started by saying, asking that first question, is it a conflict of interest or is it a perceived conflict of interest? And then it's the willingness to really kind of start looking at the individual situation and kind of understanding that it really is going to be dictated by the individual situation. Now, I have one other question I'd love to ask you in the time that we have is, you know, what does, what can a board do? Because conflict of interest creates a lot of frustration. It can, you know, create a lot of dissension. It can really pull a, poor, a board apart. But what can a board do to be proactive so that they, when they kind of are faced with a conflict of interest, they have something, I don't know, something to support them before they get there? Uh, there's a lot of very quick foundational items they can do, and certainly is uh, having people make a, uh, a, a, a conflict uh, statement hmm. or signing uh, with their uh, board oath of allegiance if, in fact, they do have a conflict, because conflict does happen. Yes, yeah. And yeah. when it's, it's acknowledged immediately, there's less issues. Right. Well, and I really like what you're saying. It's that sense of actually you know, let people sign something so they understand what a conflict of interest is and educate them beforehand because conflict is going to occur on a board. That's a natural thing, uh, not a negative thing. 
And the more that we can kind of prepare our board members to deal with this inevitability of conflict of interest, the better our boards are going to run. Terry Clark, thank you so much for joining us today on Robert's Rules Revealed. Your expertise is more than appreciated.